Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming here today uh, to uh, get a briefing on, on last night's city council meeting. Um, it, it's good to have the participation that we have from our community uh, regarding um, many things that were on the agenda last night, but in particular, I wanted to talk about uh, the ordinance that we passed last night by the city council um, regarding an occupational tax. I want to start by saying that uh, the vote was not for an occupational tax. The vote was in support of home rule and the vote was in support of local governance and that which uh, local voters uh, elect citizens, um, they're choosing who run for council and who run for mayor to make decisions on behalf of the municipal of municipalities and um, various towns and cities in this state. Um, Ten mayors who represent over 70% of the population in this state sign on in opposition of House Bill 147. That House bill would prevent any city from levying an occupational tax after February the 1st. That is a problem for a city like Montgomery which seeks to uh, bring in revenue uh, to better support our first responders, to pay our policemen and our firemen and women uh, more money uh, that they deserve, to provide more benefits that they deserve, and to give them the equipment and the technology that they deserve in order to keep us safe. And the vote that we had last night was not one that we asked for. It was one that we were pressed into by a forced decision by a state legislator um, and colleagues that do not think cities and mayors and city councils uh, know how best to uh, respond to the needs of their citizens. That's a problem. Uh, that is legislative overreach in its purest form. It is a power grab in its worst form. And it's something that uh, has held this state back for decades upon decades because mayors cannot do the things that they need to do uh, in order to make decisions to keep us in line with other communities across this country because so much has to go through our state legislature and we cannot make those decisions on a local level. And bringing in revenue is an important part of growth for any city. And when you think about Montgomery, we are not only the state government capital, but we are the region's economic capital for all of central Alabama. And this is a region that has hemorrhaged jobs, it has hemorrhaged population, and it has suffered from stagnation and economic growth and opportunity. And our campaign last year was one of which we spoke of bringing opportunity uh, to this city and to this region in a way that resulted in us winning two-thirds of the vote. Um, that was a multiracial, multicultural, multigenerational uh, coalition that we built. And that was built because we had a message of bringing about a new Montgomery. Well, a new Montgomery is one that doesn't exist uh, doing things in the old ways that they've been done for decades before. Uh, it means looking forward and being bold and being deliberate about how we respond to the needs of our citizens, how we invest in this community, and how we provide first-class service. And to me, that starts with public safety. It starts with our policemen and women. It starts with our firefighters. It starts with our first responders. But it also extends uh, to our communities, to our neighborhoods, to redeveloping community centers, and to supporting programs that will help this community grow in a way that not only benefits people who live in the city, but people who work in the city, who may live elsewhere, who live in rural parts of central Alabama. We certainly understand that. But in order to do that, we cannot compete with cities in this state or cities in other states for jobs and economic opportunities that we need to grow this economy and provide the services on the current budget. And what the city council had been trying to do for the last few months was to hold public meetings, very transparent, um, to have these discussions about the needs facing our parks and recreation department, uh, facing our engineering department, uh, facing even some of the debt service that we have. Uh, but most importantly, again, to make sure that public safety was addressed in, in a way that would not be reactive but would be proactive. And instead of our state legislators coming to talk to us about 
solutions mm -hmm. to address our revenue shortfall. Um, they sideswiped us, they blindsided us uh, with a bill without talking to myself, uh, City Council President Charlie Jenright, or anyone else on the City Council because they didn't think they had to. They didn't think they needed to do that. And that's the problem. And so we were put in this position even after negotiating um, everything from asking them to take the bill off the calendar, the legislative calendar, so that we could have some conversations and we could look at other revenue options that may be out there that we didn't know about. And we even mentioned that we would do this at least for a year. And that's important because I do think that it, had we had time, maybe we could have come up with some solutions to address these issues. And ultimately, I think we all want to do the same thing, but we have to respect the power of all of our positions. And as the chief executive officer of this city, I'm responsible to the citizens of Montgomery, those who voted for me, those who didn't, and those who didn't vote at all. But we're responsible for the prosperity of this city, and that means understanding where other communities are and what they are doing. And we were not given that option. So after talking about tabling the bill for a year, we then decided to see if we could find some middle ground by reducing the fee that we were looking to levy. From 1%, which is where most of the cities are, including Auburn, including Birmingham, but less than Opelika uh, and less than Gadsden, to 0.5%. And that was met with a rejection as well. So we didn't have much option if we wanted to ever have the chance to bring in additional revenue to this city. This city operates on more than $100 million less revenue than the city of Huntsville, even though we're roughly the same size. That same city of Huntsville put in $100 million to lure the Toyota Mazda plant to its area just last year. That was city money. No state incentives included in that. We aren't in that position to do that. And we would never be in a position to bring jobs of that magnitude to this region because we don't have the financial capabilities to do so. And so I want to make it clear that we didn't start this uh, administration seeking to levy any fee or any tax. What we started this administration doing was to see how we could address the needs that we discussed throughout this campaign and how we could support uh, all of our workers, uh, all of our staff, and the citizens of this city and the citizens of this region. And we just believe that if we're going to be the regional capital, then we have to lead from the front. And that means making tough decisions. And that means having tough conversations. But ultimately, those are things that pay off for cities and communities that choose to do so. And so before you know, I open it up to any questions, I just want to reiterate the fact that yesterday's vote by the city council and my uh, encouragement of them to support the ordinance was as much about home rule it was much about local governance being able to make decisions for itself without having to go through the legislative process for every issue that we have to address than it was about anything else. And the fact that uh, House Bill 147 was presented without consultation, without any discussion with local officials, uh, to me was disingenuous. Uh, to me, it was not done with the right motivation. It was not done in the spirit of cooperation. Only after uh, some discussion with the House leadership uh, was there an opportunity to talk with our state representatives who never felt like they needed to talk to anyone uh, on the local level or anyone uh, in city government leadership. And I think that is a problem. And I think the bigger problem is that there was no middle ground that they were seeking to, to meet other than absolute power over what cities and municipalities can do to bring in revenue uh, for their citizens and to bring in revenue for their services. And that is not an effective way uh, to run our cities. It's not an effective way to grow our state. It's not an effective way uh, to grow our economy here. And so I just wanted to explain some of those things to you and let you know why we uh, did what we did 
um, last night regarding the ordinance uh, for an occupational tax. And at this time, I'll open up for any questions that you might have. Um, what tactics are you going to use now that the Senate committee passed the passed HB 147 the, to prevent cities from? Has the Senate passed it? Yeah, the, the Senate committee. Okay, so so it'll go to the floor of the Senate, and we will ask you know all the senators to, to be in opposition uh, to that bill, and and we will uh, ask our representatives, in particular uh, the Big Ten mayors. Uh, will ask their delegations to be in opposition to the bill because where this bill may be about an occupational tax, another bill may be a, a, around a lodging tax and your inability to do that. Uh, another bill may be around any fees that you may have. This is how cities operate. This is how you get your trash picked up. This is how you, we pay police and firefighters. This is how we build community centers and staff them appropriately. This is how we encourage community uh, revitalization um, through revenue, through funds. That doesn't just happen because we pray about it. It doesn't just happen because we wish it true. It happens because you had the resources in order to make it happen and the leadership and the will in order to do it. Mayor, would you consider legal action to get what Montgomery needs? Absolutely. All, all, all options are on the table. Uh, we would hope that the Senate would not pass this bill. And we would certainly hope that if the Senate did pass the bill, that maybe the governor uh, would consider vetoing the bill. Um, and we would certainly add, use all of those uh, options and make all of those requests of the leaders that we have. And I think for us, it's very important because when we're asked to do the things that our citizens deserve, um, they're not asking for anything more, anything less than what 26 other cities already have. And that is revenue from people who work in those cities. And, and let's keep in mind, we're talking about 1%. We're talking about a penny on the dollar. So I think we have to keep that in mind because no one who claims to care about taxes is talking about removing the taxes on groceries. No one who claims to care about taxes mentions putting the cap on sales tax. And right now we're, we have one of the highest sales taxes in the state at 10%. Now that is a regressive form of tax if there is one. That's criminal. And so that's where we are. So we, we, we have a certain level of, uh, of hypocrisy here in terms of being fine with certain taxes and fees but not being fine with others. Or more importantly, maybe who's doing them. And maybe that comes down to what cities actually want to do things for their residents. And I think there's a problem with that uh, when the cities generate the overwhelming amount of economic growth and prosperity in this state that mayors have to uh, come to a committee to figure out how best to make decisions and then deal with the legislative process and something that should be a local issue that is decided by the councilmen and women uh, elected by those towns and those cities uh, that have those bodies uh, represent them on a daily basis. Uh, Representative Chris Sells, uh, he declined to go on camera. I, I, I believe he's the sponsor of the bill. I just want to read a statement from him. Uh, I don't want to, want to get your response from him. He said that his concern is the 60,000 people that live outside of Montgomery that commute here to go to work. So what is your response? Was his concern that same way when he voted for the gas tax, which was the largest tax increase in the state of Alabama's history? I don't remember him having that same concern. So again, we, we pick and choose uh, what we want to do and who we want to do it for. And maybe the question is maybe who is supporting that gas tax and maybe who's against this occupational tax. And that may tell you the rest of the story right there. But while he's worried about the 60,000 that come in, so are we because our firefighters have to help them out if something happens. Our first responders have to help them out when something happens. Our policemen and women have to help out those same 60,000 people that come in here. Our city engineers have to make sure the streets are smooth and everything is paid for those 60,000 people that come in here. So we're concerned about them as well. And quite frankly, if Montgomery doesn't do something different, if Montgomery doesn't keep up, those 60,000 people won't be coming to Montgomery or anywhere else because there won't be the jobs here in order to sustain them. And so everyone wants to kind of carve out their own little argument for a certain camp of people, we're looking out for everybody. Because as an, as an executive, that's what you have to do. 
We can't delegate like the legislature. We can't kick the can down the road or pass it on to a committee to be studied or reviewed from now to the next five years. We have to make decisions that are in the best interest of the people here today and that are in the best interest of this city and this community tomorrow. You brought up the sales tax, and um, just want to get some clarification. Is the ten percent is that is that for the that's for the state, correct? That's that's city sales tax. City sales. Tax. So our, our sales tax in this city is ten percent. So you guys have the power to, you know, either want to reduce it. We could get with the county and 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 work that out. Um, and we would love to be able to be in a position where we could do that. The legislature could be in a position to reduce sales tax on groceries. No one wants to pass that bill. So again, it comes down to, you know, what are the priorities here or who are the drivers behind those priorities? And that, that may tell us a lot in terms of why certain issues are uh, of importance and certain issues are not. Because I don't, I don't know of anything more important than making sure that we have enough policemen and women in this city to keep everybody safe. I don't know of a, of a bigger priority than to make sure our firefighters have everything they need to go into a building or a house and come out safely and bring out everyone they can that's in that house. But for some reason, a legislator from a town of 4,000 people uh, believes that he knows more about how to govern the city than myself and the nine city councilmen and women who've been elected here. And that's the bigger problem. And, and, and I'll add an additional problem is the fact that they don't see an issue with how this impacts other cities and other municipalities and what this precedent sets in terms of what they, they can do to address the needs and the services of their community. And I think that that presents a problem, not just for Montgomery, that presents a problem for any city and any municipality in this state. Um, I know you're focusing on local control, um, but I'm wondering the revenue from the tax, it's going into the general fund. How will people know how it's used. Well, they would know because it, it'll be allocated in our budget. You know, we have an open uh, budget process. It is public, um, and we have made no uh, bones about our priority being public service. I'm sorry, public safety, and to make sure that the services for the public are second to none. Those are things we have to do in order to grow this community and to grow this region. Um, everyone tend, tends to look at things from a tribal perspective, uh, but we have to look at things for the entire collective because we, we can see a lot more than maybe what some of the people on the ground can see. And regardless of what we do in Montgomery, it impacts the surrounding counties. It impacts the river region. It impacts all of central Alabama. And so they will understand where that money is going throughout our budget process. But public safety is by far uh, the number one priority. Uh, our community centers and our neighborhood revitalization certainly is a part of that. Uh, assisting with our educational uh, goals and initiatives will be a part of that and supporting our public schools um, and other areas that we would also want to address in terms of our infrastructure. So those are things that uh, communities that are growing, communities that are attracting talent, and that are uh, retaining that homegrown talent that they have, that's what they're already doing. They're doing those things, and that's why when people talk about growth in other cities and why we don't have that here, why we're we missing out. Mayor, um, if you can't get the occupational tax, have you considered other revenue measures? Absolutely. I mean, we've looked at, you know, uh, various abatements that, that currently exist and what that might bring in. And um, we've, look, we've looked at other areas as well. And that's what we were asking the legislature to give us more time to do before uh, we were blindsided uh, by this legislative bill, which would have restricted us from ever implementing it. And so our approach was not to um, implement an occupational tax right now. It was to stand up for local governance and for home rule. It was to reinforce uh, our citizens' ability to have their representation do what's needed to address the issues uh, in this community. And so had we been able to table this bill, had the legislature pulled this bill from the calendar, then we would not have gone forward with our vote last night. It was, it was solely in their hands what the outcome would be. And that's how they designed it. Will the um, occupational tax Will um, people who pay a business license fee be excluded from paying that tax? And 
Um, how much is a business license fee? That varies. I think there, there are different discussions going on uh, about that. I know there's some bills in the legislature to even address that, uh, which we haven't really studied as much. Um, and so from our standpoint, you know, what we really wanted to do was to make sure that um, we had the wherewithal to legally uh, enact this ordinance as a city and let the legislature take their course uh, as they've already started doing. What's the next step for the, for the tax? Where, the, where does the city go from here? Well, I think the city goes to, to the legislature, again, to, to oppose the bill that's currently being deliberated um, by our state senate and to let them know that not only uh, does the mayor of Montgomery oppose this bill, but the mayor of nine of the largest cities um, in the state of Alabama opposes this bill because of what it does to local authority and how it undermines our ability uh, to bring in revenue for our cities with which, based on our outdated constitution, we're already limited by. So we don't have a lot of options uh, in that standpoint. So where we are right now is we would continue to take this to the legislature to see what our success is there and to try to explain our position to the state senators. And then if um, it passes, then we would certainly look at, you know, certainly talking to uh, Governor Ivey about why we would ask for her to veto the bill uh, and to consider any other options that she might have. And maybe we would have time for one more question. Uh, yeah, so really you're in a holding pattern right now. You just have to wait to see what the legislature does. No, we, I don't want to say we're in a holding pattern. We plan to be proactive and, and to really st uh, take our case uh, not only to the citizens um, that watch the news that in your viewing area or read your news outlets, um, but also to let everyone know, again, why this was done. Um, let them know that this was not a, a city priority and let them know that we were forced into this position by the legislature threatening uh, to take this option away from not just this city, but any other city uh, from now until without their approval. And, and I think we, we have to look at the state uh, to take a look at whether or not we trust the legislature to make decisions on the local level, uh, given where so many issues are, uh, whether it's in our prisons, whether it's in our um, ALEA and our state troopers and our ability to fund various state agencies, whether it's regarding mental health or whether it's regarding education. All of those are deficiencies that, to me, state leaders really ought to be more focused on than what local leaders are doing to address their needs. And for whatever reason, maybe they want us to be handicapped uh, by some of the same things that uh, keep them from making decisions. But at the local level, we don't have that option. Uh, we don't have the option to push things down. Our citizens expect results, and they deserve the services uh, that come from that. And only in our legislature can you have so many issues going be going on at the state level that this would be the first bill that was taken up uh, by the leadership in our legislature without any consultation um, with the mayor or the city council um, about alternatives or other options that may present themselves. Mayor, Capital City Connection, um, how does the state respond when the federal government tries to tell them what to do? The state uh, usually responds by taking the federal government to court. Certainly, it usually responds by uh, not being a, a willing participant and usually using the argument of uh, government that's closest to the citizens knows what's better for those citizens. But for some reason, in this case, that doesn't apply. So again, another case of uh, you know, being disingenuous in another case of hypocrisy and contradicting one's own self uh, and how this bill has been approached and what it means, again, not just for Montgomery or not just regarding an occupational tax, but what it can mean for other cities and towns and their ability to bring in revenue for themselves.